A huge breakthrough in the world of physics this week through a collaboration 15 years in the making. Scientists found out that they are now able to hear that they can detect gravitational waves in space. Joining us now to talk more about what that means is Brett Boland, an associate professor of physics at GVSU. Brett, thanks for coming in tonight. This is something that Albert Einstein theorized over 100 years ago, and now we're finally getting some definitive proof. Talk about that. How did they make this discovery? Yes, sir. Um, the first thing is that this is the discovery of the background radiation. Actually, about in 2015, we saw the first gravitational waves on Earth with an instrument called LIGO. This, the, and what the gravity wave does is it stretches and squeezes space-time, so space-time moves like this. Now, what they did is nanograv, which is a nanohertz, so it means very, very long. These are wavelengths of almost the size of a galaxy. And what they're doing is they're looking at rotating stars known as pulsars, and they're measuring the distance to those stars. And they can see when a gravity wave passes, again, space-time stretches and squeezes in exactly the same way. So what this does is it proves that there's not just one black hole, there may be billions of black holes, but they're all making noise at the same time. So it's just like you're in a room and there are a thousand people talking. Yeah. You can't hear anything, but what you hear is hum. Yeah, I was reading one account. I mean, that's what it was kind of like, a, if you think about the, all of the cacophony of sound in a city, that background hum, that's sort of what we're talking about here in the universe, that it's literally humming and kind of buzzing all around us. Exactly. This is, these, are, these are black holes which which are burned, but it's not just one black hole. These are thousands of black holes. And we're talking about cosmological time. So we're yeah. pushing to the very early universe. Is that the, the whole point of this, I guess? It's just the scientists, they want to get back to see how far that they can look back to the beginning of time. That, and we have spent a long time since the time of Galileo looking back using, using light. In the 20th century, we began to use radio and x-rays and gamma rays. But now we're able to measure the universe with a completely new force. That's the force of gravity waves. So people in physics call this the beginning of the era of multi-messenger astronomy. It is, and the same time, it's sometimes it's a very, it's a huge concept to try to wrap your head around. Thanks for breaking it down a little for us as science is now entering a new era. Rev Nolan with GVSU, we appreciate your time tonight.